Okay, let us look at uh, this question. So for number one, answer is two, because uh, this part is the chloroplast pointing at B. So in the presence of sunlight, chloroplast enable this cell to make food. So which part of the cell can be both found in animals and plant cell? So answer is two is A, B, and C. So A, you can find nucleus, right? In both plant and animal. Cytoplasm, it can be found both and see the cell membrane. Okay, next one, they say which, the diagram below shows four different organisms, unicellular. Okay, unicellular means uh, they are single cell. And actually one of them is very unique. It is able to make its own food. So I like to share with you this very interesting organism to this video. So you can sit back and relax this video. I would, some part of it, I will fast forward because it's a nine minutes, 39 second video. We have this preconception that animals feed on other organisms while plants peacefully do photosynthesis. Animals move while plants are immobile. That may well be the case in the macroscopic world. At the microscopic level, this distinction between plants and animals collapses almost entirely. Euglena is both. So this organism is called the euglena. Can you see euglena? It is being magnified 200 times. Plant and animal. Euglena is mixotrophic. When magnified a few hundred times, euglena mostly appears as a cigar-shaped, almost worm-like microscopic creature. Although its appearance may vary among its roughly 900 species. Euglena is able to use sunlight as its energy source, just like a plant. So you say that actually it can make use of sunlight as an energy source because it has this uh, chlorophyll within its chloroplast to make food. While it is also able to feed on organic matter and in some cases even to hunt prey. Euglena actively pursues the sunlight with a primitive eye and a motor called a flagellum similar to the long tail sperm cells use for okay this part uh, you can see is moving uh, like a feelers uh. that's a very unique design by god uh. it's called a flagella it's actually a biological motor that can actually rotate uh, in one minute more than 1000 times per minute it's acting as a motor locomotion what makes euglena's flagellum special is its positioning and its sometimes extreme fluctuations in length. To the contrary of what you might expect, the flagellum is not attached to the tail end of the cell, but it is attached to the head performing a pulling motion. Some euglena species have extremely short flagella, which are almost useless. This is too short. Huh? So for this is the eye. Huh? So sometimes this uh, eugena has a nickname. Huh? It's called a, like a green dragon. While others have flagella so long, they are more hindrance than help. Euglena can dispose of its flagellum and rely also on another form of locomotion called metaboly, which allows them to slither and glide like a worm. This is made possible by the flexible cell. Euglena has no cell wall and instead is covered in a thin, malleable sheath with a distinct surface structure. So as you mentioned, it doesn't have a cell wall, okay, but it has this covered with a protective shield. Considering these features, it is no wonder that Anthony Leuvenhoek described Euglenas as green worms when he first discovered this microscopic wonder during the late 17th century. Green worm. But Euglena is all about the eye. Ehrenberg, a naturalist of the 19th century, decided that the eye should be the name-giving feature of Euglena, which is Greek for beautiful eye. This ominous eye is a distinct red spot, giving Euglena the appearance okay, the appearance of, here. of a little angry dragon. Little angry dragon, uh, little angry dragon. 
The red eye spot is not light sensitive. On the contrary, it blocks light. The light sensitive structures are beneath and around it, allowing Euglena to determine the exact angle of incidence by the shadow the spot casts on the light sensitive molecules. So how did Euglena acquire the characteristics of both plants and animals? Okay, this part will fast forward. It all seems to have on a sure. cellular level in digestion is indisputably driving away from cyanobacteria. Okay, this one is actually a plant cell. Okay, the cell wall of this part, you see? This one moving inside are the chloroplast. And this is also how we animals acquired our mitochondria, the energy factories in our cells that allow us to live. On a cellular level, indigestion is indisputably driving evolution forward. This extreme density in carbohydrates and other complex organic molecules makes Euglena an interesting candidate for the production of biofuels and as a potential food source of the near future. Let's take a closer look at Euglena's fascinating behavior. As an example, we will use Euglena sanguinea, the blood Euglena. It definitely is not hard to guess where this name came from. So it's a blood light shape. It's magnified 1000 times. Its dark red color is striking. Euglena sanguinea's reddish tint is caused by a huge lump of keratin. Okay, this one is actually to take a video on the surface of the pond. Uh, just like you go to the botanic garden, sometimes you can see uh, on the surface. These are actually dark weeds. Okay, the green color are dark weeds. Uh. So actually due to the different light intensity from the sun, uh, the surface of a pond actually changes color, as you can see. Uh. It's in its cell. This is how millions of blood euglenas look to the naked eye. Stunning. The sunlight causes them to swim to the surface, where they form a dense layer drifting on the surface. The cells ball up into perfect little spheres and secrete a gooey, gelatinous substance, perfectly transparent to light, preventing them from drying out and serving as a matrix for communication and perhaps even for the exchange of nutrients. The cells drift on top of the surface like a raft. This is how they maximize exposure to sunlight and at the same time gaining easy access to CO2 and other gases in the atmosphere. Okay, actually they are organisms, so they swim to the surface. So if the light intensity is just nice, you can see they change almost fully greener to uh, absorb more sunlight okay, for the process of photosynthesis. So you can see actually on the surface of the water, there are air bubbles being released. So those are oxygen being produced. In these conditions, their photosynthesis is going full throttle, causing the gelatinous matrix to bubble up. Can you see this part? That this bubble being released, these are actually like the oxygen bubbles being released in the process of photosynthesis. So generally, you see they are, they are millions, billions of them. So this part is the brownish color. With oxygen. And here comes a little surprise. Euglena sanguinea have an integrated sunscreen. One might even call it a biological aperture. The big lump of carotene in the center of their cell is in fact a complex organ that can be contracted or expanded at will, essentially like a chromatophore, like those found in the skin of squids, allowing rapid changes in color. When light exposure is intense, blood euglenas expand their chromatophore, blocking harmful UV light. This expansion gives them a red appearance. So they say when light intensity is strong, uh, that's mean like under bright sunlight, they will change this part uh, to almost fully red. Because it's, uh, the light intensity is too strong, they, they want to uh, act like a sunscreen uh, to protect itself from the harmful UV ray. When light exposure is low, 
they contract their chromatophore, allowing more light to reach the chloroplasts, causing their tint to change into green. A time-lapse video of the surface of really the pond observe, yeah. demonstrates this effect very impressively. That so this part, uh, because the, when the light intensity is just nice, not too high, they will, op they will turn to green to absorb as much sunlight. But when the light intensity is high, they will change to this, okay? To red color, to reduce exposure. Direct sunlight colors them blood red, while shade tints them green. In this footage, you can see the expansion of the chromatophore happening under the microscope as they try to protect themselves from the intense light of the microscope illumination. When the layer of cells drifting on the pond's surface is disturbed by mechanical stimuli like rain or splashing, the cells start to dissolve the matrix, shifting back into your glenoform and start to swim into the gloomy depth of the pond, where they are waiting for the return to the surface. What fascinating creatures they are. Thank you very much for watching. So indeed, they are very fascinating. So one of the adaptations are, because you all learn about animals and plants adaptation, right? So the adaptation of this Eugenia is its ability to control the amount of sunlight it can receive by the changing color effect. So we go back to the question. Okay. So the answer for this is definitely three. Lah. Because this, this organism, it can, okay, it can make its own food in the presence of light. Okay, next one. Okay, this one is quite easy. So the answer is one. Okay, so you mark this one. Uh, one, four. Okay, continue first. Uh. Let's dig up some more dirt. So I've gone through the answer. You look through this one, number four. Okay, five is four. Okay, next question. Okay, before that, uh, maybe I just pause here for this video about Eugenia.